Hi, I'm Danielle with Stay Designs. Welcome back to my channel. For today's tutorial, it is a sew along. I am really excited about this one because besides loving the books and the movies, which the books are so much better, but <laughs> this is my pattern. And it's been a, over a year in the making, try, going from doodles to actual bag form. It's It's been awesome working with Kim and Alex to get this going. But it's the Deathly Hollows. Oh, this bag is so cool. So this is a light up. So we got our jelly front. And so in this one, I chose to do like a really light minty kind of green because I'm a Slytherin. So I wanted to add like a little bit of a green factor. So if you want to see what it looks like, you have to go wait till the very end or you can fast forward and then you can see what it actually looks like all lit up. But it has a very subtle green underlying color for this and it just makes it look so much cooler because it being the Deathly Hollows bag it just it just gives it that really cool look but if you're using jelly vinyl you can use any color you want and I go over and discuss the jelly color options in this video so I won't go into too much detail now but it just looks super subtle like this just looks black but when you get up close it's all the Deathly Hollows and it just looks really cool and I love the subtlety of this final. You really wouldn't notice it until you actually are looking at it. And then there is Deathly Hollows hardware that can go with this and it will I'll show you pictures of all those options in this video. So you got Chicago screws, you have strap anchors, you have zipper poles and webbing. So all the Deathly Hollow things you can get for this bag. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial and hope you guys like making the Deathly Hollows bag. So when you guys get your Hollows light up bag, it's gonna come rolled up looking like this. Here we go. So little preview. So this is the front of the bag. This is our jelly. So this is gonna give us the light up feature. Oops, I'm excited for this. And then let's keep rolling. All right. We'll start with our lining. So we got like the brother's tail kind of themed lining fabric. We have our, this is the triangle for the back of the bag. Then we have our gusset, our zipper gusset pieces, and then our slip pocket right here. And if you wanted to, you could use the slip pocket pieces to make like an additional pouch if you wanted to. But because we are going to be using EL wire and it does have the battery pack for it, it's nice to have a designated pocket piece or a pocket for that battery pack to go into for the bag. It doesn't have to have a pocket. It could sit at the bottom of the bag. It's personal preference on if you want it inside of a pocket or not inside of a pocket. So we'll go from there. All right, so we got thou that stuff. Let me set that aside. And then our front. Ooh, I like the subtle Deathly Hollows like printed onto the vinyl. And this, so this is a smooth vinyl. Oh, it's so pretty. So we got our back. And then these are the D ring tabs for the side for if you wanted to make it into a crossbody. You could make this into a backpack if you wanted to. I Personally, haven't made the triangle bag into a backpack. Wait, let me think. Have I made it into a backpack yet? I can't remember if I have or not, so I can't tell you exactly where to place the straps for the best comfort for wearing it as a backpack. So I'm just going to do, we're just going to be doing it as a crossbody. So D rings for the crossbody options. And then again, we have our gusset and our zipper gussets right here. So additional things that you will need to cut out. You will need to cut out binding. And so our lining pieces is kind of like a really soft gray and a darker gray. So a couple different color options for you guys. Or you could use black. Personal preference on what you want to use for your binding. Could use any color you want, really. So you'll need your binding. And then you're going to need to do stabilizer. Because it is a little bit larger of a bag. And we have this big back piece. I would recommend, you could probably get away with just Decoville Light, depending on how much structure you want to it. I'm probably just going to do Decoville Light in the back 
And then I definitely wanted in the gusset and the zipper gusset pieces to make sure to help keep the sides nice and sturdy. So I'm going to try Decoville light and then I'll give you my opinions after the fact if I should have gone Decoville heavy. It just kind of depends. So I am going to get all of this cut out. Oh, and so never mind when I'm now that I'm thinking you're binding <laughs> because it is a light up bag and you have the front of this in jelly. I just totally brain farted. I'm like, wait, no, we're not just doing a completely solid triangle here. You're going to either need to use jelly vinyl for your binding. And if you have the option to use, what is it? TPU. TPU is the softer, more flexible jelly vinyl versus this is TPU. No, this is not TPU. This is PVC. PVC is stiffer and thicker. So it's great for like structure to help with the structure for bags. But if you're looking to do it as binding, I would recommend TPU jelly. And then you could also do this in colors too. You could use white or if you wanted to use like your house colors. So any of those house colors, I would recommend lighter colored for your, if you're going to do a colored binding on this, a light, like if you're going to do blue, like a really light pale blue, it's going to shine blue. It'll be blue, but it'll look better and it'll shine brighter. If you use a really dark blue, it's that darker color is going to mask the light more. So if you're going to, again, if you're going to do like a red, yellow, or a green, make sure they are more of like a pastel red, a pastel yellow, pastel green, a lighter on the lighter color. So any of those colors you could totally use, or your other option is you could use clear or not clear jelly, but clear vinyl in general. And if you're going to use clear vinyl, I would recommend something really on the thinner side. Like you can get that from like Walmart carries thinner clear vinyl, but something that's going to be really easily and more flexible and e like easier to bend and like not quite such a pain in the keister. And then also if you're, when you're doing the, adding the binding on, using double-sided stick tape really does help to keep it in place as well as using your clips as in, in addition to the double-sided stick tape, it'll really help hold everything in place and you're not having to fight holding everything in place and keeping it all intact. So we got the binding. So either using jelly vinyl or clear vinyl. And if you use jelly again, just rem another reminder, we just, I know we just talked about it, but using the lighter colors, if you use something other than white, and then you need to cut out your stabilizer. And I'm going to be using Decoville light for mine. So I'm going to get that cut. Going to get this all this part ironed on out, all the iron out of the wrinkles, and then iron on my stabilizer. And then I'll meet you guys at the sewing machine. Also, another really quick thing. Sorry, lots of quick things. When you're going to cut your stabilizer, you want to cut this overall length of this and this part one inch shorter than its total. So measure this out and then cut one inch shorter and then cut at least a half inch or yeah, probably do like an inch narrower too, because then it'll give you the, they'll give you half inch on each side of that. So that's going to be, give you your measurements for these. When you go to do your triangle, I would, after you cut this out, I would trace this onto whatever you're going to use to interface the bag, trace out the full pattern. And then when you then remove that, and then from there, measure in a half inch from your, the main bag exterior, measure in, and then draw a second line, a half inch in, and that will give you your measurement for your stabilizer for the back of your bag. Okay, so this is my jelly binding that I am using. I am using a greenish color because I am a Slytherin house. So I'm hoping that this turns out really cool. Then I didn't mention it before, but of course being a light it bag. And oh no, I didn't. I mentioned something about Yale wire. See, I already forgot what I said. But so here's our Yale wire. Here's our battery pack. And so it is always a good thing to test your lights prior to sewing them into the bag. So, yes, yes. Which way am I doing this? All right, so we get those in there and then make sure that you have your prongs are facing the correct way because if you don't, then you can bend them and that would be a bad day. There we go. 
Ooh, I wonder if these batteries are just dead. Oh, there we go. So when I close my hands, you can see them in there. Let me turn on flash. And then you guys can see the flashing in my hands. All right, so lights work. So we're going to pretty much leave them disconnected, if I can, there we go, for the remainder of sewing this together. So we got our lights. I don't need these for a while, so I can set those aside. Other things you will need in regards to hardware. So you'll need, I haven't decided if I'm using gray or black zipper tape. I, probably, I don't know if I have enough of that. But you'll need some zipper poles, some swivel clasps, a slide adjuster, and some D-rings. So I will insert photos of all of the lovely Harry Potter themed hardware that is going to be available from k &A. So we got all, so yeah, you guys seen all the cool zipper poles and all the different options that we have for hardware from k &A, which I need still, I need to get restocked. I am either don't have enough of or out of a lot of my Harry Potter stuff. All right, so we got all of that. All right, I know I said for stabilizer, I was thinking Decoville Light or Heavy. I've done one of these before and I've used heavy and I really like the heavy because it has a really nice structure to it. I decided not to use the Decoville Light. I just think that it would be a little to make it too soft and a little too squishy. So I'm gonna try a different avenue and I'm gonna use foam. So if you wanted to try to use, or if you wanna use foam, you cut the foam and I'm using sew-in foam. So my sewing foam is the exact same size as my back panel, the gusset, the zipper gussets, they're the exact same size. If you wanted to use a fusible foam, yeah, like the, the Fuson foam, whatever that number is, I don't really know what it is, but you can cut that out of your, out of your seam allowance and it would be the same if you were going to use one of the Decovilles. So keeping it out of your seam allowance if you wanted to go that avenue. But I'm gonna try this one, see how it, See how it works. I feel like it, cause it's like that gives it, that's some, I think I feel like it would give it some nice structure. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this is gonna look like. Other things that you will also need to do. So we got those, your lining pieces. So these, I ironed these all nice and flat. In the printing process, some of your lining pieces and your exterior pieces can, they can become a little bit different in your sizes. It is always good to verify. So like this zipper gusset lining and exterior, that one's good. Where's the other one? Did I already start losing pieces? Did I leave it somewhere? No, there's a lining piece that I'm looking of exterior. That's what I'm looking for. I'm like looking for the wrong thing. Okay, so let's check the other one. Because sometimes they can come back and your lining pieces will be longer, which you want to make sure to trim. If it is longer, you want to trim it down. So, so far, those are looking good. If it's wider, that's totally fine. Those can get trimmed off down later. It's the length that we want to make sure that is the same. Okay, so we got that one and this one. All right. This one turned out really well where the lining and the exteriors are the same. Perfect. Okay, so we can set all of our lining pieces aside for the moment. We just need to work, grab all of our exteriors. And what you're gonna do with your exterior pieces, if you are doing foam like I am, you will be basting your foam pieces together to your exterior pieces. If you're doing Decoville Heavy, you would have already ironed those onto here. So you can kind of ignore this part here. So I'm just gonna show you on one piece and then you'll end up doing, you'll do the same for the remainder of, so your back, your gusset, and the other zipper gusset. So I'm just gonna do the one zipper gusset. So you lay your foam right on top. And then 
you just clip them together just to help hold it. You don't need to put a ton of clips, but personal preference on how many you would like. And then I'm gonna base this on so you can extend your stitch length out. And then you're just gonna go all the way around. And I don't need to worry about even if the foam is a little bit wider, because I can trim that down. I just wanna make sure that it's completely covering my exterior. All right, so then all you gotta do is go around at an eighth of an inch and you're going to baste your foam and your exterior together. So this is my foam and my exterior all basted together. So then I'm gonna go around and any of the foam that sticks over the edges, I'm going to trim that off. But what I just did for this one piece, you're gonna do that for all their other exterior pieces. So you're not gonna do it on the jelly front, just your back, your other zipper gusset and your bottom gusset. So you'll have three more pieces to do with this one and then trim off all of your excess of the foam. Now that you have all of your exterior pieces with added with their either the stabilizer or your foam, whichever one you decided to choose, we're going to grab some zipper tape. So I haven't decided which one I'm going to use. Do I want to use shiny? Okay, so that one's just about that length. Oop, I would waste a little bit less. So we'll go with the matte. All right, well, that was an easy pick. Or do I want to go gray? Because I got lots of gray. Hmm. Let's see what the gray looks like. Ooh. Yeah, I think I like the gray option. Make it pop a little bit. Or do I want it to be super subtle? Yeah, let's go subtle. Now that you got your zipper tape cut to the length that you need, you make sure to heat seal both of your ends. And then we're not going to put on our zipper tape, zipper teeth. Wow. Zipper poles. There we go. Just yet. We're going to do that after. So that way they're not going to interfere. So we're going to lay our zipper right sides down on top of our exterior. And so mine is longer. So I'm just kind of centering and eyeballing mine if yours is the same length make sure that you line up your edges as well as your top edge right here and then get those clipped together after you got it clipped together you're going to just base this together at an eighth, eighth of an inch you can have a little bit longer of a stitch length if you want Now that we got our zipper basted onto our exterior, we're gonna grab one of our lining pieces. And then depending, because this is a directional lining, you can choose if you want them to go in the same direction, which these do match up like this. Let me zoom out for you guys. There we go. So these do line, line up. So then when we do this, we wanna make sure that we're going to line up correctly. So if the zipper is open, this will lay like this. Okay, so then that's, that's good, okay. So the first one I'm going to make sure, I'm using sewing the bottom to that one and then this one will sew the top to that one. So for our lining piece, we want to make sure that we are lining up our edges here as well as our side edges here. Make sure you get those all clipped together. Once you have it all clipped together, you're going to sew this at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, now that your lining and your exterior, everything's all sewn together, what we're gonna do is then we're gonna fold our exterior and our lining away from our zipper. So I'm gonna first, so we got it like this where our lining is up and I'm just gonna press, finger press my exterior, 
because the biggest thing is you don't want to tug on your zipper when you're trying to flatten this out and push them together because that will cause your zipper to go wavy. So I'm just trying to get these guys to line up without tugging too hard on my zipper. So getting our sides lined up, clipping those together. Now we get to finger press those together. So then after you've got them all lined up and you got a finger press, we're going to top stitch at an eighth of an inch. Once that's finished, this is what it's going to look like. And everything we did to this side, you're going to repeat and do that exact same process on the other side. And when you do that, make sure you're also lining up your ends with this side as, long, as well as the edge of your zipper. Now that our zipper gusset part is finished getting sewn together, we're going to go ahead and add those zipper pulls. So if you have a zipper jig, go ahead and use that. If not, go ahead and follow along. So we're going to take note of what our zipper teeth looks like. So this one is kind of angled downward like this, and this side has one coil. Let me zoom in a little bit closer. There we go. This side has one coil higher. So we're going to pull that apart and that will come into play here in a little bit. So we're going to grab our zipper. We're going to put one side in. We're going to bend this around and we're going to add the other side and we're just putting in a little bit. We're not putting so like that. Oop, I got out of frame. Sorry. So like that far, that's too far. So we're going to I remind myself to stay in frame. So I'm kind of moving the zipper pull around to try to get the teeth because we're looking through the back trying to get them to line up the best I can and then we're pushing our zipper teeth zipper pull down and so now we have that slight angle and this side has one coil above and we're gonna get a beautiful zipper every single time and then we're gonna check our other side so now this side has one coil higher I'm gonna purposely go off on this one to show you guys what it would look like if it was slightly off. So bend that around. So this is definitely like way off. And when I bring it down, you can clearly see that you got this weird bulge right there. So that's not gonna look very pretty. So let's bring this back. Sorry, again, I keep going out of frame, sorry. So we're going to check out the back and we're pushing our zipper pull back and we're gonna keep our zipper teeth inside the zipper pull. But so they're down far enough that they're separated and so I can kind of maneuver them around and then pull one side up, down, one side up if I need to. And then we're going to then push our zipper pull down onto them. And let's double check. Yep, this side has the one coil higher. And then we bring it down. We don't have a weird bulge to either side. And when we bring them all the way together, we have a beautiful double zipper pull or zipper, yeah, zipper pull gusset. Okay, for now, we're going to set this aside for the moment. We're going to grab our D rings. Oh, there's the other one. I'm like, I know I had them both here. With so we're going to then grab a ruler. We're going to mark our center. So that's going to be one inch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the edge. If you wanted to, you could, could grab a piece of double sided stick tape and add it right down the middle and then fold your edges ends in to meet the middle and then stick that down and then that will hold it in place. But I tend to be a little on the lazy side, so I just hold it and then I sew down the one side at an eighth of an inch. So I sew down and then I grab my other one, do the same thing. And so that we're going to chain stitch these together. When I get down to the end, I'm going to pick my foot up with my needle down, rotate. Then I'm going to add the other side, fold that into the middle, 
So across the bottom, needle down, I'm gonna pivot over, make sure to hold down that middle to the middle, and then I'm gonna sew up both sides on the other one. Now that your D-ring tabs are sewn, we're gonna grab our actual D-rings and then fold these in half. I just like to put some clips on and just to make sure that I don't lose the D-ring. So I'm just gonna put, leave that one there. So I'm gonna take the one, I'm gonna grab my zipper gusset and I'm gonna bring it over here to the side and I'm gonna line it up in the middle of the two sides so it's kind of right in the middle, right over the zipper. And I have a tiny bit of hangover, not a lot. So I have about a quarter inch hangover. And I'm gonna first, just, I'm just gonna sew this down at an eighth of an inch. So an eighth of an inch from the edge of the zipper guts and not from the edge of this, cause then I won't sew on anything really. Okay, so that has our, so now our D-ring is sewn down. We're going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, if you have your D-ring sewn on, this is what it's going to look like. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab our exterior gusset. And it doesn't matter because this is a non-directional vinyl, which is nice. I love non-directional. So we're going to lay these right sides together. And we're going to make sure... that we're lining up the edges right here. And our gusset, our main gusset is going to be a little bit wider than our zipper gusset. And that is okay, because I'll show you guys how to fix that. So this is what I mean by it's a little bit wider. So we got a little bit of hangover here and a little bit of hangover here. So not the end of the world. So once you have it clipped together, we're going to sew this down. We're first just gonna baste it at an eighth of an inch. All right, so now we got that basted together. And now that we, I have the lining side facing up, the quick segue, I like the foam. The foam just makes this really fluffy. So if, you're, if you struggle with trying to keep things underneath your foot, underneath the foot, especially at an eighth of an inch if you are doing foam because it is a little fluffy and it can you might want to shift on you. This next seam allowance is going to be three eighths. So if you wanted to sew this first one at a quarter inch, that way you get more of your foot on there, you, you can. And that way if it's e easier and it helps you guys. So go ahead and do totally do that if you need to. So I want to make sure when adding my lining that because are my zipper gussets matched up quite nicely. I'm very happy with how that turned out. I want to make sure that this is going in the same direction so that it is. So we're going to lay those lining to lining. So right sides together for the lining and we're going to now line up the sides with our exterior and we're going to line up the top right here with everything. So we're going to clip all that together. And we're going to sew this at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, and everything that we did for this side, we're going to repeat for the other side as well. After you get both sides sewn together, you're just going to have this like big gusset loop thing. And so what we want to do is we're going to turn this out so we're going to have everything so that our lining and our exterior will be wrong sides together but will be right sides facing out and what we're going to do we're going to clip our gussets together make sure you get everything turned out nicely i just want to double check because sometimes if you turn your exterior right side out it the lining fits better with the lining facing out or facing in which let's try slipping this because my lining's a little bit bigger that way okay yeah it fits better okay if so it fits together nicer at least for mine with the exterior or the lining facing outward and we're just making sure to clip this all together 
because what we're going to do is we are going to baste all of this together and that way it makes it it'll make it so much easier when it comes time to add our binding and put it all together trying to keep all the layers organized if they're not basted together is is definitely a pain in the keister so doing this little extra step is very helpful okay so now essentially we have a big old circle which then will turn into a triangle so we can lengthen our stitch stitches out and we're going to go 360 all the way around on both sides of our gusset and we're going to be doing that at an eighth of an inch okay so this is where i was talking about earlier that our gusset our the main gusset and the zipper gusset there's a size discrepancy even when i've done the zipper gusset if i when i've sewn it at a quarter inch then the zipper gusset's wider than the gusset it's kind of one of those weird lengths that it's just no matter what i do it's just one is going to be bigger than the other so when you're basting these together what we can do is angle as you get closer to it let me zoom in for you guys so we're going to take up this excess right here. So I'm going to kind of sew at an angle to meet to come in. There we go. And so then when we come when at the end, I'll cut that excess off. So we're just going to keep cruising around. Okay, so now we're going to be doing the opposite. So this side's not quite, doesn't stick out quite as much. So we're going to come up to it. And then we're going to slowly go out to meet this exterior there the gusset all the way out here so it's a gradual ex like getting out to this side so instead of just being going a harsh one because i'll make our binding putting on the binding easier okay and so that completes this one side so now you're going to repeat that same steps on to the other side once you've completed sewing around both sides, so right here you can see it from the lining side, how I taper in. What we're gonna do is we're going to cut that down because I'll make this part easier when we go to do the binding. So we're gonna keep that same distance away. And it brings us down, get through the thick part. There we go, so now we have a nice even. I and mean, you're gonna do that to all of the, the four edges right here and then you make sure to double check any of the lining so like right here i have a little bit of lining that sticks over you want to make sure to trim the lining part down as well because that will cause some potential issues when doing the binding as well okay our gusset is now completed looking really pretty okay so we can set the gusset aside for the moment and we are going to grab the back Nope, we just want our lining first. We're gonna grab our lining and our two little slip pocket or yeah, slip pocket pieces. So first we're gonna grab these guys. We're going to put them right sides together and we're going to clip around and we're gonna make sure, because we're gonna sew all the way around this, leaving an opening so that way we can turn it. So then we can have our slip pocket. I'm gonna go down here and then if you did lengthen your stitch length make sure to turn it back down and then we're gonna sew around this at a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm gonna make a little mark over here to kind of to remind myself to stop because sometimes I forget to stop After you guys have sewn around your pocket piece and making sure to leave your opening, we're going to trim our corners. This will help when we turn it out to help them lay flat. All right, after you got your, corner, your corners trimmed, you're going to then turn your pocket right side out. So I'm just shoving my thumb into a corner and then using my index finger, I'm going to push that corner through so that's one, and then once I get one corner, I just kind of work my way around getting the rest of it. 
And if you leave a decent size opening, it, turning this out will be really easy. If you leave a too small of an opening, you're gonna, you're, you'll be struggling. And then once you get it, for the most part, turned out, you're just gonna take your time and you're going to poke out each of the corners. So if you have a po pokey turny tool, or in my case, a mechanical pencil, you're just gonna work yourself into those corners to make them so that we get a nice crisp corner. And make sure to don't push too hard because you can actually push through your stitches. And if you do accidentally push through your stitches, just turn it right back out and then sew around that corner again. It's not the end of the world. Okay, once you got your corners all turned out, another thing you guys can also do to make this look nice, which I might get up and do it, is you can take this over to your iron and give it a nice little press. That way it'll flatten everything out. And then plus then you can flatten your opening for where you turned it. You can tuck those edges in and then kind of give it a nice little press. That'll help it when you go to lay your pocket down and sew around it. So I'm gonna go give this a nice little press real quick and I'll be right back. So I've got the pocket all pressed. And so there's a couple things to ponder. So this is what the one side looks like, and this is what the other side looks like. I like that I can see the three brothers and, what is he, the Grim, Grim Reaper? Or whatever it is. But on this one, like he's like off the edge of the thing, so you can't really see him. So I'm gonna do this side as the side I see. So the top, we're gonna make sure we top stitch that. Okay, we're gonna keep get our that close by. I'm gonna fold this so I can try to find the center. Okay, so we kind of got that little crease there, and then we got our bottom. We're going to find our center, add a small little notch to the bottom, and then I'm just gonna clip this. So we can try to make a little center crease. Alright. All right, so we got our crease-ish. It's not the most perfect thing in the entire world, but it's okay. So we've got a light, light crease to find the center. lined up on the center and I am I am an inch and three eighths off the bottom making sure to double check both sides yep inch and three eighths you can go closer to the bottom if you want to it's personal preference on on that one there's no dead set like oh you have to go here I'm like no you can go where you want so I'm actually gonna bring it down a little bit so now I am inch and an eighth. Yep, inch and an eighth. So now I'm gonna sew around the three sides. So I'm gonna start up here, gonna go down, across the bottom, back up, and then I'm gonna end over on this side. And I'm sewing that down at an eighth of an inch. Okay, before I get around to the sewing on the bottom, I wanna take kind of like a mental note of how I want to, because I want to put the battery pocket, the battery pack in this pocket. And I want to be able to get the wire from the pocket down to the binding. So I'm going to leave a small gap in here that I can push my wiring through. So I'm going to probably put it down on this side. So I'm going to stitch a little bit and then I'm going to back stitch and then I'm going to make a little jump. Yeah, that's plenty big. Let me go back a little bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna go down, back stitch, and then I'm gonna continue on. Okay, got our pocket all finished, and so this is where my little hole is where I'm gonna feed my the wiring through. And then the other thing I want to add, oh dang it. I thought about adding it like here. Oh, 
Dang it. Okay, so I got a cute little uh, tag from Mormino when I was went to one of the So Magicals last year. So this is not available on the website. This is a special request. You have to ask for this specifically. So I was thinking about adding it into the side of the pocket, but I could I could undo my stitches or add it there, or I could add it into the binding here, or I could stick it in on the outside of the bag and have it sticking out the outside of the bag. Ew. I think I'm gonna put it on the outside of the bag. I'm gonna leave it there. Hopefully I actually remember to use it. All right, but I am gonna add my label. So I like to personally add my labels to the inside of the bags. You can add yours wherever you have your personal preference for. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this. Okay, we got our pocket on, we got our label on. Do I wanna add the, no, I'm gonna, I'll, Going to feed the wire through, but I'm gonna wait and do that till after I get these guys basted together. So make sure, so for being in non-directional, it is somewhat directional being that it's a triangle. So if I did it like this, clearly that's not right. So make sure you have your, the Deathly Hollows logos, symbols going the correct direction. So that's my top. That's my top. All right, so we're going to then line it up. We're going to clip it together. And if your lining is a little bit bigger than your exterior, that is okay. Because that will get trimmed down once we baste it all together. Okie dokie. Okay, so my lining is a little bigger over on this side, so I wanna make sure that I am going to base this together with my exterior facing up, so that way I know I'm going to be stitching on that. I'm going to lengthen my stitches, and you're going to, going to sew around, all the way around at an eighth of an inch. Once you get it all basted together, any of the part of the lining that sticks off, you're gonna, make, you're gonna wanna make sure to trim that down. All right, before I forget, like for the millionth time, I'm going to add it on this side. I'm gonna add it down here. So I'm just gonna sew this down gingerly there. And just kind of baste it through. So now that we got this all basted together, we are going to grab our gusset. We're going to line up the seam where our zipper gusset part and the bottom gusset came together. So there. And I'm just gonna put some clips on on either side just to kind of help hold this in place. And we're going to then find our center on the bottom. Come on, Glenn, work with me. There we go. And we're gonna add our snips on either side. There we go. And even though I didn't really make a mark for the top, I'm just gonna do the top anyway, so I have a general idea of like where it is. Not that I really have anything exact to line it up with. General, general idea. Okay, so we can remove those guys. And probably having a brain fart. Okay, this is where we need to do a little pondering or slight, our first decision. So I'm gonna turn this right side out for the moment. Okay, so because the exterior is non-directional, Let's do like, maybe like this. All right, there we go, that works. Now the question is when you open the bag, so if the bag, if this is the back of the bag here, and so it's against your body, and you open the bag here, do you want to see the lining the correct way? Or if, again, back of the bag, and you're looking from the front of the bag, do you wanna see it wrong side up, like the same way? Or let's do this again. This is the back of the bag, and this is the front. Do you want to see it right side up? So it depends on how you're gonna look in the bag and if you want to see 
something right side up. I think I'm going to do it. This is the back of the bag. So when I open it, because it's going to be on me for the most part. And if I open it, it's going to be on me. I want to be able to see it right side up. So let's do this for our back. So because I will forget which one's which. And then flip this out. Okay. So now we got that. I got our, my mark so I remember which one goes where. We're going to, I'm like, I know I made a notch. I made a notch on the lining, but not the exterior. So transfer that over. Okay, not pretty, but it works. Okay, we are going to line up the notch on the bottom of our triangle with the bottom of the gusset. I'm gonna put that there. So we're gonna add some clips along the bottom. Okay, so we're gonna we'll work one curve first. So we wanna make sure we're trying to keep those edges lined up. through the first that curve so I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna go do the other other curve and now we're gonna work our way up towards the top around the top curve and now I'm going to ease the X the, the rest of this into the straightaway and if I need to make any adjustments I can along one of the sides Yep, just move, moving some clips around and kind of smoothing things out will help to ease in any of the excess. Those are, make some adjustments here at the top. So that way my curve, top curve looks a little bit nicer. And then again, just kind of maneuvering clips around to help kind of just get everything settled in. Okay, and then I made myself, oops, I got it out of this thing. I made myself like a little start start spot. So what we're gonna do is we're going to sew around everything around the whole triangle that we clipped together. And we're gonna sew this at an eighth of an inch first. And I wanna, I can, I'm gonna do a little bit longer stitches, but not super long. Go. And we're gonna again do this at an eighth of an inch. Let me zoom in for you guys so you can see what I'm doing. And again, we're trying trying your best to keep the ends, your edges lined up to the best of your ability. Sometimes when you get into the corners, things naturally want to push off. And if it, if letting it push off will keep it from getting a pucker, then let it push off. Cause you can always trim that, any of that excess off cause it's a lot harder to fix a pucker. Oop, slid off a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I'm back on the bag. And then if you're doing any adjustments to this, make sure that you pick, you take your foot off your pedal and you have your needle down. Okay, once you finish so basting around your gusset and your lining or your gusset and your back together, we're gonna go around and any of this, so like this right here that sticks over, we wanna go around and we trim up any of those that hang over because that will affect our binding. So we wanna make sure that we're getting an even surface 
So that's, that's not too bad. I can trim that down a little bit. It's just you wanna make sure that anything that's like really bad sticks out. You can also, while it's basted together, we can turn and kind of like check out our corners. So that will all get sucked into that uh, all that ugliness. will get sucked in when we do our full seam allowance. So, so far it looks good. I don't see any, any puckers, which is good. Wow, the foam is... Okay, so kind of like a preview. Let me show you guys a little preview of the foam. Like, that's that's got some nice little structure to it. I, I like that. I like the foam. I am glad I did the foam. Because that's... Yeah. I, I would recommend foam for this. Now we're going to grab our lights. And... Hopefully I don't have this tangled. Oop, I got a knot, so let's not have it twisted. We're gonna grab our end. We're gonna go into the pocket. In that little part that we left, the little gap here on the bottom. We're going to poke that through like that. Okay, for the wire, we you don't wanna pull too much of this out, but we wanna pull enough. Get back in there that the white, so the light of it, will start at, at the curve. But before we do that, so I'm gonna stuff some of that back in there just for the moment, we need to pre do a little pre-stitch here because if we don't pre-stitch and we go and we add our binding and we when we jump over that, there's that gap on the, like when we sew through the exterior, like on the exterior, there'll be a gap in our stitches when we jump over this. So that's why we do the little pre-stitch right here. So that way when we do jump it, their stitches will still be there to help reinforce that area. So, and we're going to make sure we got our stitch length where we need it. And I'm just gonna sew that at a, that little area at a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so now we have that area so when we jump over the wire this will be sewn down so we are covered okay, now let's grab our my jelly binding so i'm also going to grab some double-sided stick tape because i found because sometimes when you the joint of the two ends of the jelly it just sometimes is a pain in the butt to get them to like trying to get them to cooperate and just stay put and just ugh, it's a pain. So I'm gonna add some double sided stick tape right there and then I'm gonna also add it on to the other side and I'll take that off, the tape off when we get closer to, when I get around to the other end and we join the ends. Or maybe I'll, no, I'll do it later. Okay, so when we do this, we want our wire to sit right here on the seam. That's why it's important to make sure that this seam is flat and there's no big bumps or anything because that will affect it. So we got that side, so we're gonna curve this around. And I failed to mention this prior to, when I cut my binding, I, don't, I cut this at an inch and a quarter. If you wanted to cut this at an inch and a half, you can cut it as wide as you want. Like I, for me, an inch just isn't quite enough. So I like to do it at an inch and a quarter. So that way on the side that I'm sewing on, so I'm sewing it from this, from my line, my lining, my gusset side will be down. I have a friend, she does it the other way where this part's down, she sews from this side. So it looks like this when she's sewing it around, but I do it this way. So personal preference, there's no right way or wrong way, whatever works for you. But when I'm sewing, so I, cause I'm sewing from this side that I can see, I like to put 
enough on this side that I can see that I know I'm like, okay, cool, that's enough. And then all my extra goes to the back side in hopes that I can catch my stitching on the other side. Cause the worst thing, like it sucks when you, when you're cruising around, you're like, okay, cool, I'm done. And then you miss like half of your binding on the back side. You're like, dang it. Especially if you're doing like jelly or something that's not a double fold one where you've already sewn one side down kind of thing. But so there's that. And then you just cruise around through the corners. Over here. And then if you want to, you can add some double-sided stick tape into the corners. You can add it wherever you want to, to help just kind of help hold this in place. So we're cruising. So you just keep going around, clipping it in place. Okay, now that I'm getting back to where I started, I want to, I'm gonna trim down my jelly binding. And I, jelly binding sometimes it doesn't like to be overlapped. So I like to just have it neat. And then hopefully I remember I will measure my other one and then tell you, so to be able to tell you guys exactly how much I used. Okay, so now I'm going to peel off Oop, I don't want to peel off the, all the sticky stuff, just the paper. Okay, so we got the back side stuck down. And now I'll take this side. Okay, so make sure that you, the wire we have here, we're going to cruise and bring this in. And I'm gonna trim just a little bit more off. There we go. Because that way it's easier to turn the wire to go to the front. And then, there we go, we get it all stuck together. And then I'm just gonna add some clips there to help hold it. All right, there we go. That is Okay, this is gonna be fun. All right, so we have one, just ref, just let you know, we have one meter of wire. And so it's gonna go, I'm doing it around the whole back. And then I'm gonna go across the front. And this won't do the entire front. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it right now. It will get me to the top and partially down the side. So what I'm essentially, what I'm missing is from right here to right here. So this on the front won't have any lights. So if you wanted to, if you preferred, you could do the lights, uh, put the lights, wrap the lights around the front first and then only have a little bit of the lights go around the back. So you, you could do it in the reverse order where you wrap the front first and you wrap starting with this end and then the end with the, for the battery pack, it would be a little bit harder because that the end of the wire is a lot bigger. So you'd have to leave a much bigger gap here. So it'd be a little bit trickier to get it to work out, but you could do it that way essentially. Or like, a, or just if it's not in the pocket at all, and let's just say that the when wherever this ends, you just have the the battery pack just kind of like hangs out. You could do that. So if you, it just depends on if you want the wiring to go around the whole front first, or and or the whole back first. So personal preference on that one. But just wanted to let you guys know ahead of time that it will not completely wrap around everything. Okay, so when we go around, I'm gonna zoom in. This wire, when we saw it on the front, you can kind of see my stitch, like right here. Okay, so wires right here. This black is should be my basting mark for, nope, what is that? Yeah, that's my basting mark. Okay, so right there, 
this is at least an eighth of an inch. Yeah, so our wire is an eighth of an inch. So normally when you do binding, you sew it at a quarter inch. But because this wire pushes when we line it up against our line for like the quarter inch, in reality, we're only actually going to be doing an eighth inch on the whole bag. But we want to do a quarter inch around the whole bag. So that means we have to use our three eighths inch seam allowance guide here to be able to get the quarter inch here. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start just on this side of the wire, so I'll jump it afterwards. So I'm getting myself lined up with my three eighths. There we go. And my stitch length is where I need it, perfect. And then do my back stitch. All right, so I'm gonna keep you guys with me as I'm cruising. So apologies, it might get a little boring. So I'm making sure, having the double-sided stick tape to help hold the beginning. Oh, what am I caught on? Oh, there we go. I just, nope, now you need to, sorry. Started pulling the wire out of the pocket, so, because the back end of it got caught. So having the double-sided stick tape at the beginning, right back here where we started, the ends, it really helps hold those down and hold them close to the bag because what it's gonna, what you will see happening is the wire and the jelly will want to naturally push and drift away from your bag. So you really have to hold, be holding pressure down once you start letting go of your clips. So that way your jelly and your lights do not push away from the edge of your bag because if they push away, then that means your seam allowance is actually less than what you want it to be. So just cruise around, take your time. Trying to get you guys a nice view. So as we're coming into our first corner, I'm really pushing on my jelly to help hold it in place. You wanna lift your foot to help release any of the tension. Because your foot can cause like the, just the pressure of pushing down on the fabric can cause stuff to get kind of weird. So when you lift it, it kind of releases that. And so then I'm also having my hand on the inside pushing it around, trying to keep everything that's right in front of this as flat as possible to help reduce potential puckers. So, and pushing this jelly, my lights, trying to keep everything tucked in. And this is where if you put double-sided stick tape into the corners, that would be very helpful. Yeah, as you can see right here, it's already, it's pushed itself out like right there. It's, it isn't, that clip is no longer really helping me or do anything. Okay, let's, let's put some double-sided stick tape because that looks like a pain in the butt. And part of this could also be the foam being right there on the edge and being bulky. It could also be playing an effect or having an effect on this as well. So as much as I like the foam, the foam is also being a pain in the butt. Make sure everything is back in place. Um, that. Pushing that on. Push that down. Okay. Woo. Okay. Let's keep going. The 
this is like the one benefit of if you did clear binding for this instead of the jelly. The clear, you could truly see where the edge of your fabric is. And then you could really see like, okay, am I actually getting a good quarter inch seam allowance? Am I not? So that's one, one positive thing of using clear for this. Hopefully that will help. Oh yeah, I'm glad I added that clip. And again, I am holding it back here. I'm gonna lift my foot, trying to keep all the material that's right in front of my foot as flat as possible. And take your time, make sure you're keeping everything squished together. than the last one. Again, grabbing my bag, lifting the foot to relieve any of the built up pressure. And I can maneuver the bag as well to get in the right position. To the beginning part of where we started and you can see right there is my quarter inch Oop, make sure to get the dot wire out of the way so I'm lined up exactly where I need to be going over my little the pre-stitch I did so what I want to do is I have my foot off the pedal for the right now I'm going to lift my needle Push my bag through under, and then that way I bypass the needle. There we go. And now I'm back down and I can continue. And then do a little back stitch. And... Okay, so that's finished of the one side. So now I can go around and all this excess, I'm gonna double check and look around, make sure I caught everything, which looks like I did. So I'm glad I pushed. Yeah, cause that one got really close to the edge there. So I can go around and all this excess, I can trim it off. I can leave it, personal preference. I'm probably gonna trim up some of the area. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then after that, I will, will continue on. Here. I got my edges trimmed up how, as much as I'm gonna trim them up. So I just wanna pre, kind of do a little pre-turn and just make sure that the seam allowances turned out good. I, my corners look good. 
Okay, so we kind of got a little, the little form of a little pucker right there. That was the corner, that was my first corner, I think. Oh, no, I think that was the second corner. So it wasn't the corner that I had the most troubles with, I think. I, think, I can't even remember. Okay, but for the most part, everything's looking really good. Okay, and so for the most part, everything's looking really good and that little tiny little pucker isn't like super insanely noticeable. So that's not too bad. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cry over it. Well, I, I might later, but yeah, it's not, it's not big enough that I'm gonna undo the jelly binding and redo it. Like, yeah, that just sounds like a pain in the butt. So no, thank you. And then I got my little tag. I got a little tag, makes it so cute. Okay, now we can turn this back out and we can continue on. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, we're going to baste on our front. So we're gonna grab our jelly and we're going to match up our bottom corners and we're gonna add just a tiny little snip to find our center bottom. And just like we did with the back, what we're gonna do, it'll be the, it'll be the same, same process. You're gonna line up the notch with the notch and then you're going to clip that together and you're going to work the curve and then go to the other curve and then work your way up to the top and then ease in any of the excess if you need to. Okay, so I tried going around and adding my jelly one on like I did the back or the, yeah, the back and it did not work. So I put clips along the bottom. Let me zoom out. There we go. So I got clips along the bottom and then I clip the top for the most part in the center. And so now I'm going to try to work this in. If need be, add little snips into the corner to get the gusset to relax a little bit. <coughs> Sorry, gotta love, gotta love puppies. And hopefully that will help to get this to relax and open up or even add little snips into the jelly to get it to relax. So you just kind of got to work with it and see what's going to hopefully get everything to line up and come together. So definitely take your time with this one. Be patient with it. It will come together. Just might have to work a little bit more than the back. Okay, Dookie. Okay, that's okay, that's fitting better. Okay, let's I'm gonna add some snips into the jelly. Hopefully. I'm just making some small ones, nothing nothing too big. Because our seam allowance isn't super big. Okay, so there's that. And if I need to, I'll do it on the actual gusset too. One side. All right, let's. I'm gonna work from the top down on this. Okay, so got it all figured out, and it's all lined up, fitted together. So yes, adding little snips into the jelly really helped get him into those corners. So again, line up the bottom, then bring up to the top and then just work your way and just work everything else in. Okay, for this one, well, I should have thought of this ahead of time, but I didn't. Make sure to open your zippers. That way it makes this part a little bit easier. And I find starting on a side that has the zippers is a little bit easier because then it's, you can kind of stuff it underneath 
there a little bit easier. So we're gonna get that underneath. And we're just gonna go around and I'm gonna lengthen just a little bit. And we're gonna sew all the way around at an eighth of an inch. pinching the side corner of the bag here to help when I get to my corners. All right, so I'm again lifting my foot and then trying to keep all the fabric underneath, right in front flat. Squish if I need to. and maneuver the bag around as needed. And then if you need to, having the zipper open, you can reach inside to help keep everything flat. And then when you get to the top or even into any corner, if something, if you try to push it in and if it bun bubbles up like that, right, like right here, and if you, if I were to sew over that, that could potentially cause me a pucker. So it wants to push out. I'm going to let it push out because letting it push out, I have less of a risk or a chance of it causing me to have a pucker. So I'd rather have something I need to trim down than potentially get that pucker. Are done if you need to like right here the part that I let push out I need to trim that down after you get all your corners or anything that's trim that needs to get trimmed up is all done all right so I have my wire that's gonna come across in this general area so I'm gonna do my little pre stitch area from we'll just do it from like here here yeah and maybe a little bit maybe a little bit smaller so yeah, we'll go from there to there all right so push that down in the way and we're gonna do again this is a quarter inch So once you get done adding this little pre-stitch area, just like we did on the back, you're gonna go around clipping on your binding over your lights. And so you want your lights to sit right on top. And as a reminder, your lights will not be able to go all the way around. So it depends on the direction that you wanna go. If you want to do only a little bit of the bottom 
and leaving so like for mine mine ends like over here roughly so I'm leaving from like right about here to there that won't be lit up roughly so and it's pretty much if I go the same if I go the other direction let's see if it's about pretty much about the same well if I go the other way then I have more of the side here uh, left open or left unlit up so I'm actually gonna go to this corner first so that way I have most of the top and the sides done all right we're gonna slide in this okay so for reference my lights go in right here they go around the top and they end where they end right here it ends right here and so I added some double-sided stick tape to that went up and over to help hold the lights in place. So then when I get around here, I'll have to transition from doing three eighths back to like almost a normal, like pretty much a normal quarter inch seam allowance for the remainder because I don't have the lights pushing me further away. So I'll get kind of handle that when I get to that part. So I just made myself a little spot. Slide this under and we're going to get the three eighths. All right. Let me make sure I'm, sure I'm working at the stitch length I want. Okay. All right. And just take your time going around. Okay, I'm getting close to where my lights end, and so I can feel the big cap on the end right there. And that kind of pushed me away a little bit because it's a bigger cap. Okay, and I'm slowly decreasing my seam allowance. So I still have a, I'm not quite three eighths, but I'm still bigger than a quarter inch, a little bit. Okay, and you can see right, I don't know if you guys can see, but let's see if I zoom in. Oop. So right here is where my my previous quarter inch stitch was. So I am doing pretty good. I am still bigger, my quarter inch is a little bit bigger now with the jelly binding. 
on, but I still don't have the lights underneath it. And now I'm getting to the point where I need to jump my, my light. So I'm... And there we go. And then I'm going to lift my needle. My foot is off the pedal. I'm lifting my, the presser foot. And I push my bag underneath. Okay, it feels like I missed. Okay, yep, I missed the light wire. You can see right here the number three and that line right there. That's my three eighths seam allowance. So now it naturally, with the light wire, pushed me back over to the three eighths. All right, so we're getting closer. Got our last corner. Just take our time. Potentially have a pucker in this corner. We shall see when I get, when we get it all turned out. Okay, binding is all sewn on, and just like we did for the back, any of this excess, you can go ahead and trim that off. Okay, once your binding is trimmed up, now comes the fun part. We're going to turn this bag right side out. Okay, guys, here it is all finished. It looks awesome. I really like it. I can push out the corners a little bit better. There we go, much better. Oops, there we go, much better corners. And so the corner that I thought I was gonna have a pucker from the front, I did not, so yay. Push those out. All right, they're looking beautiful. All right, so we, yeah, we have a little bit of wiggle room we can play with on the front. Kind of push it out a little bit. There we go. Looks so good. I like that, like the Deathly Hollows, like depending on how you look at it, it just looks black. It just looks like a black vinyl. But then when you actually get closer to it, you're like, oh, wait a second. There are Deathly Hollows all over this. Like that's really cool. So I like that part. All right, now we're gonna grab our battery pack. So we're gonna stuff ourselves down in there. Okay, where's the prongs? Okay, prongs are going that way. This one needs to go this this way. Wait, did I change it? Nope, oh, okay. Make sure everything's getting plugged in the correct way. Okay, we are plugged in. All right, now we need to take it to a dark place. All right, here it is in all of its glory. It does give off a very, very subtle green glow to this in person. It's very subtle, not very bright. Like it not, it's not a super bright green, which is kind of nice because it's a very, and it's almost kind of like a bluey gray, like kind of dark 
almost like kind of like the Deathly Hall is kind of like that. I don't know. I like it. I I'm liking it. If you wanted something a little bit brighter, I would go with white jelly or clear vinyl of those. So either one of those and it would, this would give you a much a brighter effect to this. But yeah, definitely can't see it in the back. Bam. It just looks super cool. Okay, now we got to the last thing we're going to do is our crossbody strap. Okay, for the crossbody strap, I'm just using basic black webbing. So we're going to start with our slide adjuster. So we got it. So we're going to come up over the bar. And then I'm, I like to just sew a line back and forth across. If you wanted to, you could pull a little bit more and you could sew a box. You could sew a box with an X. It's a personal preference on how you would like to. You could also sew a, a couple lines. Again, just per, completely personal preference on how you like to sew your crossbody straps. And for my crossbody strap, I do 54 inches or a yard and a half. Okay, now that we got that one side down, we're going to then slide our hands all the way down. And we, I do this just to make sure that there's no twists in this. We're gonna grab one of our silver clasps. We're gonna go through and back over on itself. And just double verify that we got no twists. So looking good. All right, so we got our slide adjuster there. We got our other end. We're gonna go up. So we're gonna go un so here's the edge of the bar. We're gonna go up over the middle bar so we can slide that over and back down. And you can pull a little bit extra. So this is what it will look like. So this part is the part that's sewn and this is the part that will get to move. And then this is the top, this is the back. We're gonna go down the rest of the end making sure again there's no twists we're going to hold our swivel class we're going to go through and down back on itself again this is the top top the back and then that should be the back okay and however you sewed this part you're going to do the same for this one all right and that completes the crossbody strap so now your deathly hollows light up bag is all finished I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial of our newest light up bag for the Harry Potter round. If you guys made it this far, I hope you guys can consider to like and subscribe. And if you subscribe, you'll get notifications of any future K&A or other tutorials that I do. Okay, thank you guys.